So let's say you want to get the Taylor series for some function y of x. y of x. Well, what do you do? You pick some center point x naught, and then your formula becomes y evaluated at that x naught plus plus some big sum y to the y, y the nth derivative of y evaluated at x naught times x minus x naught to the n over n factorial. And this is a super useful way to get uh, the series for some, some nice function y of x. But it depends on one thing. It depends on you being able to effectively calculate this term right here, that nth derivative of the function at a point. And for most of the functions that you're familiar with, that's easy to do. I mean, we know how to take derivatives of sine and exponential functions and all of that. But what happens when you're dealing with a function that maybe you don't understand so well, where you'd really like to get this full Taylor series, you know, even for arbitrary n, but you don't necessarily know an easy way to get a nice closed form calculation of each of the derivatives. What do you do? Well, that's where the Lagrange inversion theorem comes in. And then the Lagrange theor uh, inversion theorem is, is super cool because it, it's, a, it's an answer to that problem. What the Lagrange inversion theorem tells you is that if you want to get the Taylor series for a function, you don't have to know those derivative, derivatives all that well. All you really need to know well is the inverse of the function. Uh, and, so, and so what do I mean by that? I mean that uh, let's say that we have some function or, or rather, let's say that x is some function of y, but really what we want to do is we want to get y as a function of x. Uh, well, one way that we can express y is as a series. And, and according to the Lagrange inversion theorem, that series is given by this. And I'll, I'll, I'll scoot this down because I want to keep the... Uh, I want the parallels to be clear. So... That series, that, that y of x, according to the Lagrange inversion theorem, is, it's y naught, so, so you pick some fixed value of y, plus a sum, same, same type of sum, n equals 1 to infinity, with some constant here, times x minus f of y naught, over n factorial this guy up to the n and this cn is given by it's a little complicated limit y going to y naught d to the n minus 1 by dy to the n minus 1 of y minus y naught divided by f of y minus f of y naught. This whole thing raised to the n, close bracket. All right, so this is it. This is, this is our Lagrange inversion theorem. So let's, uh, let's take a minute to break it down because probably everything was going well up until this point when we, when we talk about this cn here. Uh, and, so, and so, yeah, so let, let, let's, put, let's break this down piece by piece. So, and in particular, let's compare this to, to, this, to this Taylor series here. So, uh, what's happening? Well, we have some constant out in front, which represents some fixed value of y. That's the same in both cases. The only difference being that here, uh, we're anchoring it in terms of x. So, we're, we're anchoring it with some x naught. But here, we're, we're anchoring it in terms of some y naught. And really, I mean, that's the same thing, right? I could have, I could have said, you know, instead of calling this y of x naught, I could have called it y naught because it's some fixed value of y. Uh, and so this term is the same. Likewise, uh, over here, let's take a look at this term right here. So we have this n factorial, which is the same. And here we have x minus x naught to the n. And here we have x minus f of y naught to the n. But wait, wait a minute, the f of y naught, we, we could just as well call that x naught because that's sort of fi fixing some, or choosing some fixed point in x. So this right here, this x minus f of y naught is really saying the same thing as this x minus x naught right here. 
And so these terms are effectively the same. These terms are effectively the same. The only thing that's left, and the only thing that's maybe a little bit mysterious, is this CN right here. How is this? It's not exactly obvious when you first look at this that CN corresponds to the nth derivative of y. And so I'm not going to prove that the two are the same because that's uh, that, that's a little hard and I'm, I'm not a mathematician. But what I do want to do is give some super hand wavy fake math argument for, for why we might think that this thing could maybe make sense as, a, as an nth derivative of, of y. So, so hold, hold on to your horses, I'm about to do some uh, evil math. Um, so, so what's happening here? So cn is equal to this guy right here. Well, what's the first thing we can note? We can note that we're taking this limit y going to y0. And so this y minus y0 over uh, f of y minus f of y0, that's sort of like a dy over a dx. Because th th this, this is certainly a dy as, as this distance becomes arbitrarily small. And this right here is, is essentially a dx because f of y is x and, and the two values are getting arbitrarily close. So this is sort of like you know, a big, big tilde there. Um, this is sort of like dy over dx to the n. Okay, that's that's great. Um, but now, 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 I'm really gonna piss off the mathematicians, all right? So, so now, if we, uh, <laughs> if, if if we really feel like being being bad boys, then what we'll say is, oh, well, well wait a minute, these are a couple fractions, eh? So dy to the n, dy to the n minus one. That's just gonna leave us with a d to the n minus one dy over dx to the n also known as d to the n y dx to the n. And so we've got our nth derivative of y. Um, now, r let me remind you, everything I just did was completely illegal. I think I hear the math police coming after me right now. I don't know if there will be a next video. Um, but my, my, my purpose in, in doing that is just to sort of build some intuition or really, really, really just kind of create a cartoon argument for why this thing which looks nothing like d, dny, dxn, could actually correspond to an nth derivative of y. Um, if, if you want to see some proof, I recommend search, searching searching for, the, for that yourself, because I'm, I'm not going to do that here. Um, but this is sort of a cartoony argument for, for why, why we might think that this term actually corresponds to what we know it does in, in, in terms of Taylor series. Uh, and so I think I'm going to stop here. In the next video, I'll actually do an example with this, where we'll, we'll see how in some cases, this CN right here actually ends up being really nice um, and, and really useful. But, but the main takeaway from this video is that there is a new way uh, to solve for the Taylor series for a function. And it involves knowing not about the function, but about the inverse of the function. So, yeah, so I look forward to seeing you in the next video.